Another application of genetic technology that we have to cover is something known as gene therapy. All right. Gene therapy basically is treating some genetic diseases that people have by A, inserting a genetically corrected cell into the person who has a genetic disease, or B, inserting the functional allele directly into the cells of the person's body. You might look at these two definitions and it might look quite similar. So what's the differences between these two types of gene therapy? It's not two different types of gene therapy. It's just more of like the way, the two different methods in which gene therapy could be done. You don't need to memorize this part, but let's look at the situation. Let's say there is a gene in the person where large B allele dominant makes the person uh, the person's normal in this case, but the small B allele causes uh, a genetic disease. I'm not going to specify the genetic disease. Let's just keep it as generalized as generalized as possible. Now, if the person is homozygous small B small B, the person will obviously have a genetic disease. To keep things simple, let's say because this person is small b, small b, uh, they have a genetic disease that affects their skin. Okay, so maybe their skin is not functioning properly. Right, so what we can do, number one is, remember I said we can insert a genetically corrected cell into the person. How does that work? In this case, let's say the person has many skin cells. And as you can see in the skin cells, uh, all of them, they have the nucleus and it's all homozygous recessive, small b, small b. What we can do here is we can extract a cell from the person, preferably a stem cell, a skin stem cell in the person. We can do that. And when we have that stem cell over here, which is small b, small b, we artificially insert a functional large b allele. We can introduce a large b allele. How we do that, we will talk about that later. When we insert the large B allele, what happens then? The skin cell, that stem cell now has the large B allele and that stem cell is inserted back into the skin tissue and hopefully, this is the keyword over here, hopefully, that stem cell will divide and replace all the other surrounding cells. So all the other surrounding cells will also have the large B allele as well. Right. So when it's inserted back into the body, the stem cell will divide and replace all the other diseased cells because they are homozygous recessive. So all the new cells in this tissue will also have the dominant allele. And when the large B allele is expressed, the skin, for example, can function optimally because remember, large B ensures that you don't have the disease, but small b is the one that's causing the disease. So in this case, we are inserting the genetically corrected cell into the person's body. In another way, what we can do is, for example, let's say here, the skin is unable to function optimally over here, again, because it's small b, small b. What we do is we try to directly deliver just the alleles. We are not removing any cells out. We send the large b allele directly to the skin. Hopefully, hoping that some of the alleles will go into the cells. And if some of the alleles go into the cells directly, it's not 100% effective. Some cells can express the large B allele and reduce the symptoms of this disease. So the principle, whether it's this technique, the principle is the same for gene therapy. You are introducing the correct allele or the functional allele into the cells. Now, the question here is, how do we insert alleles into the cells? For example, human cells, obviously. We will deliver the alleles using vectors or carriers. A long time ago, when we were talking about genetic technology for the combinant DNA technology, I told you that there were three types of vectors. We can use plasmids, we can use something known as liposomes, and we can also use viruses. So um, we won't use plasmids in this case because if you try to introduce a plasmid into a human cell, there is a very high chance the plasmid will be deemed as something foreign and in those kind of situations it will be destroyed by the cell enzymes. So we try not to use plasmids over here. Alright, so instead of using plasmids, what else can we use then? We can try to use something known as liposomes. What are liposomes? Liposomes are just spherical lipid membrane. They sort of have like a phospholipid bilayer but we just call it a sphere, a lipid sphere. 
and we put the DNA or the allele into your lipid sphere. For example, let's say the large B allele. So what happens is the liposome will go towards the cell and the lipid membrane will fuse together with our cell surface membrane and it will deliver the allele into the cytoplasm. So you see, the large B allele that we wanted to deliver is now inside the cell. That's what we wanted to do. So the good news is it's good at delivering the allele, but the bad news is it does not deliver the allele directly into the nucleus. Now you might be thinking, why is that such a big deal? Because you want the allele to be expressed, and uh, which means to say to undergo transcription and Gene transcription only happens in the nucleus effectively because that's where the RNA polymerase is located. So if it's located inside the cytoplasm, there is a very low chance it will undergo transcription. So it might not get exp it might not get expressed and it might even get destroyed by some of the enzymes in the cytoplasm. So Liposomes are good at delivering alleles. Yeah, it does an okay job, but it doesn't deliver the allele directly into the nucleus so it's not the most effective vector we can use so you might be thinking okay so number one we want to deliver the allele into the cell the, the functional gene or the functional allele into the cell but we must also make sure it goes into the nucleus so scientists were racking their brains to find a suitable vector until so some scientists came up with the plan or the idea why don't we use viruses now, you might be thinking, why the hell would we use viruses? Because aren't they dangerous? But think about it for a second. Viruses do a good job because when viruses infect our cells, viruses will try to deliver their own genetic information or their own nucleic acid into our nucleus directly. They will try to insert their nucleic acid, their DNA or RNA, directly into our nucleus. They do a good job, okay? So some scientists were like, hey, since viruses do a good job delivering their own DNA or RNA, why, shouldn't, why can't we just use a virus to deliver the alleles for us? But some scientists might go, oh, but it's a pathogen. But here's the interesting thing. We can edit the virus. We can artificially remove their nucleic acids or edit their nucleic acid to make them relatively harmless. The keyword here is relatively harmless. Not completely harmless, but quite harmless okay and what we can do then is we can deliver we can just put the allele the large b allele into the virus and tell the virus hey since you do a good job delivering your own dna or rna um you know please deliver this for us as well and the virus will automatically do that because the virus was built in such a way to deliver alleles to the nucleus now there are many different types of virus that we can use if you study the if you go through the textbook um, i think the textbook goes through retrovirus and adeno associated virus some textbooks also talk a little bit about lentivirus but the main two viruses that you should know are retrovirus and adeno-associated virus, which is AAV. So retrovirus is interesting because when you put the large B allele into the retrovirus, it does a brilliant job of inserting the allele into the cell, but also it will force the allele to be incorporated into the whole cell genome. What does that mean? It will cut a section of the whole cell genome and it will insert our large B allele and incorporate it into the whole cell chromosome. As you can see here, what it does is it goes inside the nucleus, cuts that area and inserts the allele randomly in one of the places. It doesn't, we cannot tell the virus, I only want it to be delivered to this chromosome. No, the virus is like, screw your orders, okay? I'll take your orders until a certain level and then I'll do whatever I want to do. So um, the allele is inserted randomly into the chromosome, which is number one, okay, because the allele, the large B allele, functional allele is inside the nucleus, that's good. There's a very high chance it's going to get expressed to undergo transcription. That's also good. But there is a problem as well. Always with problems. So number one, it delivers the allele into the genome, which is good. But it does it randomly, okay, which may cause mutations or DNA damage and mutation. 
So we don't want that to happen, right? So, and number two, there is another problem as well. Viruses have antigens on their surface because they need to have the antigens so that they can dock on and dock on the cell surface membrane and enter the cell. But problems with antigens is when you insert it into our cell, our immune system will carry out immune response, which means to say they may attack the virus. And if they attack the virus, the virus will get destroyed before it has a chance of delivering the alleles to our cells. Uh, and also immune response may cause allergic reactions, fevers, rashes. We don't want that to happen too, which, which can be quite uncomfortable. To solve some of these problems, the scientists will use something known as the adeno-associated virus or AAV, where we insert the allele. It does have antigens on the surface. I'm just, I'm just not drawing the antigens. And the adeno-associated virus will have the large B allele. It will deliver it into the cell, but it does not forcibly incorporate it or cut the whole cell's chromosomes. It just delivers the allele directly to the nucleus, which is a good thing. Because in this case, it delivers the allele into the nucleus, so that's good. The allele is safe inside there. It will be expressed. It does not randomly insert it into the genome or damage the host. If you do not want to use that second word, you can say it does not randomly damage the whole cell chromosome or it does not cause mutations of the whole cell chromosome or the whole cell DNA. You can put that in the exam. Uh, but there is still one problem, which is the side effect. Because it's still a virus, it still has antigens, it will still cause immune response in the person as well. Okay, so between these three types of vectors, between liposomes, retrovirus, and adeno-associated virus, the ones that do, do not cause immune response is the liposome, but it sucks as a vector. Uh, the adeno-associated virus is one of the better ones to use because it doesn't cause mutation, but the side effect is it may cause immune response in the person. So these are some issues that we have to consider when we are doing gene therapy. Now, one such example of gene therapy is to treat something known as SCID. Remember, I told you that SCID, uh, we talked about SCID in using recombinant DNA technology in medicine. I told you that the SCID, which was the severe combined immunodeficiency, happens when the person has a mutation of the ADA gene. They are unable to produce adenosine deaminase, which causes destruction of the T lymphocytes, which leads to uh, a weakened immune system, which causes SCID. I talked about this in a previous video. Right? And I said that one treatment of SCID is we can do gene tech, where we take the ADA gene, put it into a bacterium, and the bacterium produces human adenosine deaminase. But the problem here is the child will need to receive the adenosine deaminase injection every time. Right? So uh, that can be a problem, constantly injecting the child. So in this technique over here, let's we can try to treat the child using gene therapy. How would we use gene therapy in this case? So using gene therapy in this case, uh, infant with SCID, so what we do is we go towards the bone of the infant and the bone of the infant contains blood stem cells. Now inside the blood stem cells of the infant, we extract one blood stem cell, okay, in this case, and when we look at the blood stem cell, I'm just drawing out a pair of chromosomes. I know it the child should have 46, but I'm just going to focus on two. And these chromosomes have the mutated allele. That means this mutated allele is the one that is preventing the child from producing adenosine deaminase. So what we do here is we use the AAV, which is the adeno-associated virus. We put the normal ADA allele or the ADA gene into the adeno-associated virus and we make the virus deliver the allele into the child's nucleus. Now, this nucleus has functional allele. So can this cell produce the adenosine deaminase? Yes, it can produce adenosine deaminase. So this is called a genetically corrected cell. So what we do with this genetically corrected cell, we will reinsert that cell into the bone marrow, which I've represented in that blue color. So if I've highlighted it, if I've highlighted that cell in blue in the bone marrow, that means that that is a genetically corrected cell, 
right? But look at the other cells. The other cells are not able to produce adenosine deaminase, but it doesn't matter. What we hope happens is, we hope that the blood stem cell, that blood stem cell will become a lymphocyte. And when that blood stem cell becomes a lymphocyte, it is able to produce adenosine deaminase. And because it's able to produce adenosine deaminase, it will not cause the lymphocytes to be destroyed. So we will not just put one or two cells. We will try to put as many genetically corrected cells into the infant with SCID. So hopefully, they will not have that disease. Another way that we can use gene therapy is to treat a disease known as labor congenital amaurosis, LCA. So what is LCA all about? Keeping it simple, there is an RP RPE65 gene. You don't have to memorize the name of that gene. But you need to know that, just, just a little bit by the way, uh, you need to know that the large D allele, the dominant allele, it allows for the pigment regeneration in the retina. The retina is just a part of the eye that detects the light. Okay, So those pigments will capture different wavelengths of light. Not for photosynthesis, yeah? This is in our eyes, okay? The, uh, so those pigments allow you to see, right? But uh, people with the recessive allele, uh, who are homozygous recessive, uh, it prevents the pigment regeneration in the retina, which leads to the cell death and eventually causes blindness, okay? So just, just know that if the person is homozygous recessive, it will lead to blindness uh, when they become adults, but the dominant allele is uh, safe. It's the, it's the good allele or the functional allele. So I'm just drawing out a side view of the eye and the purple color area at the back of the eye is known as the retina. And the retina, these cells will contain the small d, small d or homozygous recessive genotype. So in this case, the pigments are no longer able to be regenerated, which will eventually cause the cells in the retina to die and the person might become blind. So what we do in this case with gene therapy, very simple. We put a virus, okay, and the virus, so this is the virus, it contains the dominant allele, which is large D. I'm just going to represent it with the alphabet. And we put it into like an injection. Uh, and we inject it, yes, we do. We inject it directly through the eyeballs into the retina. So the virus is directly injected into the retina. As you can see here, the virus inserts or delivers the large D allele, dominant allele into the cells. I'm not going to draw the nucleus, but as you can see here, the cell now has the large D allele. And because it has the large D allele, it will express it and the cell will now be able to allow for pigment regeneration in the retina, which prevents the cells from dying. The good news about using viruses to deliver the allele directly into the eye, the eye does not have that many white blood cells circulating in that area. So even if you try to put um, a virus directly into the eye, um, artificially, by the way, um, for gene therapy, the, the chances of immune response is much lower, which in this case is a good thing. So there's a very low chance that the virus will be destroyed by the immune system and the virus can deliver the functional allele directly into the eyes. So the point of the matter here is, um, for gene therapy, what we do is we try to deliver the allele either by, number one, removing a cell, correcting the cell and reinserting the cell into the body, or number two, directly injecting the uh, alleles or with the vector into the affected tissues. So I hope you understand what's the meaning of gene therapy uh, for now, and we will see the ethics of gene therapy and genetic screening in the next video.